Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon. My name is Ray Tsuchiyama, your host on Business in Hawaii. And today we have a co-host, Jay Fidel, whom I kind of missed through the month of October when I had to do our daughter's wedding, and it was a positive experience. And it's all over. And um, a long time without Jay is like a day without sunshine. <laughs> and and uh, we're here today to talk about what I wrote and published recently in the Star Advertiser, uh, op-ed, on teaching hotels. And for many of you out in the audience, very simply, a teaching hotel is a hotel, a working hotel, that people come and become guests, but they are staffed by students in hospitality and hotel management. In fact, the oldest and most significant teaching hotel in the United States is the Marriott Statler Hotel on campus at Cornell University in beautiful Ithaca, New York. And adjacent to that hotel is the building with classrooms for the hospitality program of Cornell, ranked number one in the United States and probably in the world. The oldest, it goes back to the 1920s, when the American Hotel Association came to Cornell and even proposed that they have a teaching hotel. And this is way, way back. And Cornell did launch the Inn at Cornell in the 50s, which evolved into the Marriott of today. And that gives a practical education in hotel management and the visitor industry by having students work on the front of the house in the hotel and the back of the house where they do finance and operations, cleaning, serving, and management. And that propels them into general manager roles for the hotel industry globally after graduation. And that was my proposal because I feel Hawaii is lacking innovation in hospitality and tourism. Although the visitor industry has over 9 million people coming to Hawaii, enjoying Hawaii, a $17 billion industry, yet we have a hospitality education program that is not looking to the future. And that's what I want to talk with Jay about and have a conversation. What can we do to really transform the future of hospitality education that would create leaders? And some of them, I hope, will become general managers of Hawaii hotels, where the majority of the GMs come from the United States, mainland, and Europe today. Mm -hmm. Some reflections. Okay. You know, Mufi Hanneman has a thing called Tourism 101. He's the Hawaii, uh, what is it, uh, Lodging and Tourism Association. Correct. Yeah. He was here uh, yesterday, I think, with Rick Eggett, Waikiki Improvement right. Association, I mean, yeah. talking about the, you know, the uh, the structure, the infrastructure, the management and uh, business infrastructure in, in Waikiki and in the hotel industry. And really, it does raise the question about whether Waikiki is still the engine of our uh, tourism economy, um, because there are other hotels in other parts of, of the state. Right. Uh, and most of the hotels of any consequence, I'm just reflecting on your statement of the case here, um, are, uh, they're owned by someone else offshore. Um, the, the bigger they are, the more likely they'll be owned by some, because of the need for large capital concentration. Uh, and then you, and they're, hold, they're held by REITs usually, which don't pay Hawaii income tax. and there are bills from time to time in the ledge uh, calling for that, which could pass, but they don't pass. The hotels are very influential. After all, they are the largest industry in the state, and they would oppose any tax that affects them. So all we have is the transient, uh, transient accommodation stack. Um, and what was the point? Uh, what, what, did they have any uh, points for the future of the industry uh, out of Waikiki? They look at Waikiki as the economic engine for the state. Yeah, well, sure, of course, and you know we have to, you know, take care of it, and we have to, you know, connect with it. And obviously, those fellows are uh, part of the connection, you right. know, connection with the community, and with the legislature, the government in general, so that uh, you know there's a there's a kind of togetherness here. 
but the kind of togetherness that you and I had when we were younger, you know, in Waikiki, going there for a movie or a meal, um, is really no longer the case. I mean, it's not all that friendly to locals. They, they want to be friendly. I mean, they want it to be friendly, but it isn't really that friendly. It, there's no movies there to speak of anymore. The, and the restaurants are hard. There's no local experience. There's no local experience <laughs> yeah. of local people. Right. You know, nobody I know goes there for. And it's hard for parking to go to a restaurant there. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. I mean, you go there if you have a, you know, a formal dinner right. and, when there's no other venue, but you don't, you don't go there regularly. You don't, you don't go there on a Saturday night for a, a date or anything. So, I mean, what, you know, what's happening is there's, you know, there's a separation of sorts, uh, and I hope we can put that back together again. Those guys are working at, at doing that. But here's the thing. If you go to the Shangri-La hotels all over Asia, right. not in the U.S., but right. all over Asia, you will see the most effective um, employees, uh, management and employees, those guys are trained. And in fact, Shangri-La has a school just for that hotel chain. Sort of like the Marriott, I suppose, must have dibs on the one at, uh, at Cornell, you know? Um, and this school trains people to really, really do it up first class. You need to have uh, first class. You need to have a reputation for it's first class. It's a five-star chain. Five-star right. chain. Yeah. Do we have five-star here? I don't really think so. And I think we could have. Okay, that's one kind of gestalt uh, response to you. Another one which sticks in my mind, which is really worth discussing, is years ago at the Hawaii Venture Capital Association, we had a program, and I organized a number of programs in those days about Waikiki, the engine of our economy, we call it. And, and we, we, we talked to this one fellow who left an impression from then until now. He had been in the, in the military. He had gotten out of the military. He was writing code for you know, some right. tech company. And he got up and made a speech. He said he didn't understand why the hotels, as other, many right. other large companies in Hawaii, um, rely on programmers and you know oh, computer right, right. computer people right. from the mainland when yeah. this could be the best laboratory right. for writing the best code. After all, it's what we do, and we understand, presumably understand the way you know the accounting works, the way right. It, right. It, the tour arrangements work. We could write if if we put our minds to it and our investment in it. We could write the best code in the world, and this would be exportable. Right. These programs would go everywhere, you know, if you assume that Hawaii has the talent and ha has the industry and, you know, knows the systems. If you know the systems, you write code around right. them and extend them into even better systems. So, but he said, you know, they're not doing that. They, they call somebody in the mainland to do it. And we could have had, you, you know, referred to this in your opening, we could have had you know, uh, this huge juggernaut industry uh, that knows about our hotels right. and exports that knowledge. So, um, you know, to well, me, I'm, I'm concerned about that. Uh, I, I would like to see uh, a hotel school here. Uh, I would like to see five-star hotels. I would like to see people writing code. Uh, I would like to see the hotels more, you know, integrated with the local community. I would like to see us all coming up around them uh, that's not happening, and, 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 and I leave you with this one last thought, Ray. We talked about it before the show. You know, the Travel Industry Management School, uh, was it Walter G., somebody G., uh, the dean, Chuck, Chuck, Chuck G., thank you. The Chuck G. was managing that school for years and years, and it had a reputation around the world, TIM here in the University of Hawaii, and it's gone. It's been merged into, into Shidler, and you don't hear anything up, about it. You know. It's it's. It, you know, the lights of its faculty, the leading lights of its faculty are gone. Um, I'm not sure it's doing anything these days. Certainly its reputation is not what it was. Um, we should have uh, TIM a separate, separate school, or at least we should hear about it. We should see it in action. Um, we should see it training people. We should see them happy and proud that they have hotel educations that are useful around the world in the biggest chains. After all, hotels are a big industry, travel, big well, industry. Well, let me respond to all that. Please, all your, please. Uh, multiple points. I want to points. get you stimulated yeah, here, yeah, Multiple points. But I first, missed you too, Ray. Yes, uh, first of all, uh, there is a, a, a hotel in Hong Kong that's doing something very similar to what you're proposing. It's the Hotel Icon, and it's owned and operated by the Hong Kong Polytechnic University School of uh, Tourism there. And in fact, it's a five-star hotel staffed by hospitality students. And it's about and 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 it contains in the building a fine wine laboratory and a Samsung digital IT 
uh, land for hospitality. Interesting. And you're correct that there is a disconnect. When we look at the future, you're correct. It's coding and it's software, it's programs, mobile apps uh, with phones, with watches, with tablets and PCs. There's a disconnect between IT and hospitality. You're absolutely right. That's the future. Right now, Waikiki, I feel, is looking at the future, and it fears the future. It's robots and automation, and we're like Luddites in, in Waikiki, instead of transforming and using that. And you're correct. Why isn't there a connection between the computer science department and hospitality into a new lab that really designs and develops applications that could be sold and used by every resort destination in the world? Right, come from Hawaii. That's right. It's made in Hawaii, but you have to have a top leading computer science department and hospi global hospitality group and the venture capital and the you know apps to really drive that. And incentives for small That's companies, right. for entrepreneurs. Correct, you could have startups, you could have labs, but again, uh, there are examples of that, which I just uh, told you, that is uh, you know, moving uh, the uh, envelope to include IT, in hospitality studies. Absolutely. Yeah, where did I see this? Um, it was, uh, you know, the future is in these kiosks um, where you can buy travel packages or tour packages for the day. Now you can say that's pretty cold and everything right. and we like Aloha and whatnot. But the fact is that in the industry, the kiosks are, you know, the business end of things. And, and I know people who are involved in the travel package uh, business. They are very profitable. Young kids can get into this and make a lot of money. And those kiosks are ultimately going to rule the sort of the business end of all the tour packages that you have, you know, the daily tour, tour packages. Um, and, you, and they're efficient. You know, you can, you can get what you need. You can pay a, a better price for it. You can do the competition. Uh, and the apps are the same thing. I mean, you take it a step further and right, go to right. an app. Yeah, an yeah. app is better than yes. a kiosk, yeah. isn't it? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, really, uh, I don't know why nobody's focusing on this or not enough people in my view are focusing on it. The legislature, in its wisdom, should be incentivizing this area so that there's no disconnect, so that it's all together. We, we realize our destiny the way we, we've been trying to realize our destiny since statehood. And, 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 and uh, you're correct that we are operating a paradigm that goes back, interesting to me, Chin Ho, because he saw uh, the 707 coming in the early 60s that was uh, mass tourism. Before, remember, ships brought people here, uh, wealthy people from uh, the West Coast, Hollywood stars, and they would stay here a month, maybe a month and a half. And then you have, for five days, they would stay here and then go back to the mainland. Where, where are the hotels? And those, that infrastructure of the Ilikai that Chin Ho invested in and the whole uh, uh, rise of, of uh, smaller hotels and uh, uh, resorts, family-oriented resorts, sprung up. Before it was the Moana or Royal Hawaiian, there was much, much more focus to very small, uh, you know, uh, wealthy uh, individuals. So, so uh, groups. So, the, the paradigm is has not uh, changed from the early '60s. You're absolutely right, and we're reliant on um, all kinds of well, mass tourism. Yeah, I think so. And we're working on an empty tank. We're we're stuck in a paradigm that's at least 20, 30 years old. And what we have to do is uh, not just set, put ads in the New York magazines or whatever they do with all that money at HTA, lots of money at HTA. Um, you know, uh, but we ought to make a product that's really irresistible, an American product, a Hawaii product. I mean, for example, the product should include, could include, ideally would include reference to local people, local things, local trips, local. It's not just adventure tourism. Let's mingle. Let's get and, together. And, and we'll get back to the mingling uh, right after this great break. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Hey, Stan, the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan, the Energy Man, at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. 
we're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. This is your host, Ray Tuchiyama for Business in Hawaii. And we're just about finished up mingling our thoughts <laughs> and dissecting everything. But I just wanted to uh, return back that not all teaching hotels are five star. There are uh, hotels for community colleges that are operated by community colleges, one by Kirkland uh, Community College in Iowa. In fact, they have a double tree. There was a uh, hotel management school in Maastricht in the Netherlands. They bought a old chateau and they had no money. It was right at the Lehman crisis, uh, the financial crisis. So they got donations of tiles and all kinds of uh, paint from local um, vendors, from companies. Then they went out to the community and went and contracted the top 10 young designers in the city, and they made every room different using the tiles and paint. One has a huge elephant on the ceiling, another room is all black, another room has a swing in it, and it became a tourist destination by itself, interestingly. <laughs> so the, the point of that uh, story is that you can do it without much money. You have to be innovative, creative, and really cater to uh, tourists or visitors who want a different experience. They don't want a cookie cutter room uh, at uh, one of the major chains. They want to go where it's really exciting and interesting uh, that they stay, in, like you say, in a community. So those are uh, other ways that a teaching hotel were developed and, and really uh, become destinations. Uh, and, what I hear you know, saying though, Ray, is you know, that in Hawaii, nay, island to island, the end of the state to the end of the state, we don't have one. That's correct. Uh, currently, uh, there is no teaching hotel, and it could be on campus at UH. Uh, there are some uh, uh, universities that, uh, that do that. Or it could be in Waikiki. Sure. It could be in uh, Kanapali. It could be in sure. Kona. It could be in Hilo. Uh, you're correct that it could be off uh, the campus. But again, uh, there are, but there is one uh, ho uh, teaching hotel, a Hilton Hotel, at the University of Houston campus. One building holds a hotel labs and classrooms. It's a seamless, integrated experience for students and the guests to be there uh, together in one building. Yeah. The big complaint here is that uh, I can go into the hotel industry and uh, fold hospital corners for my whole career. Uh, uh, I can make for only one job, but I should be—I should have—I have to have two jobs, you know, the union thing going on now in Waikiki, the complaint. I don't make enough money. Um, and the question really is, is there a glass ceiling? Uh, where folding hospital corners is not going to get me into management. Um, it's not going to get me into, you know, any level of administration, really. And so, gee whiz. Um, and and if, if you want a manager or administrator, get them from outside the state. Local people really don't qualify. Why? There's no training. And, uh, you know, the, and this is terrible because they're making the lowest wage on the scale. We have to get our people, our Hawaii people, into management. And in there's a struggle going on. Uh, and we have to train uh, right them now. to do that. No, you're absolutely right. And uh, there are two parts to this. A teaching hotel is about the practicum, uh, how, <clears throat> how to really uh, design uh, uh, rooms that will uh, be sustainable in terms of paint, uh, the, the rug, how, much, how many minutes to change a bed, all kinds of things. And, and also to add uh, what you said, said Hawaiian motifs and, and really cultural kinds of management uh, uh, education into the staff. And that's another area that is very, very uh, exciting that, that we saw at the Kaunapali Beach Hotel that introduced and launched this uh, really culture, host culture awareness back in the 80s. But going back to that, yes, there's a practicum side, but you're correct that there has to be the strategic high-level financing, you know, how, how do you do M&A? How do you price hotels? How do you do, you know, uh, uh, buy How do you yeah. compete with other destinations? Right. Well, oh, that's a, that's a we're huge a great uh, risk that other issue. destinations are going to beat us on everything, on, on, on service, on food, on um, design, on innovation, uh, because we're not thinking about that. We just want the profit right now. Uh, and the jobs right now, but we're not looking into the future. That's right. And one thing you talked about, which is very key, and, and there's many um, uh, hotels and other cities 
that are having little like buildings within communities. And the whole community, the shopping malls or shops, or uh, become your, uh, your hotel, in, a, in effect. That you go out and you have uh, cards that make you, uh, allow you to pay uh, for meals and so forth, introduce you to things that you would never have done otherwise. And you're right. How do you get people outside and, and kind of interact with b smaller businesses and people and cultural experiences within Hawaii? You, you're completely right, because r the history of mega resorts has been self-contained uh, in, in the Hilton Hawaii Villages or the uh, Hilton Waikoloa or on Kauai. They're very self-contained uh, uh, mega resorts that are uh, kind of outside what is normal life. And that's, but the authenticity, that's one word that visitors, especially young people, want is authentic experience. Sure. They want to go to Haleiwa, experience a Matsumoto, uh, you know, a shave ice. They want to go to the North Shore and experience surfing, you know, right there. There's a lot of things that are authentic that uh, they don't want a manufacturer. We used to have them. Don't you think we used to have them? I remember the uh, Royal Hawaiian back in the day. Uh, it was so completely Hawaiian. It, it was the Hapahali thing. The Webley Edwards thing, the Moana, all those hotels had a kind of local style. It was very classy, very appealing, you know, very romantic. You take it home and you never forget it and, and you're bonded for your whole life. You and your spouse and your family are bonded for your whole life to the romance of Hawaii. If you package it the way these chains package all their hotels everywhere in the world, and if you just put this patina of, of Hawaiiana on it, it's not enough. We could be capitalizing on our own culture so much more than we do. And, and part of this uh, theoretical hotel you're building, at least yeah. in my mind, it would be exactly that, create a brand that's totally unique, that nobody can copy, that nobody even can compete with. Do it right here. You know, if I go down to some of these big hotels, I'm thinking of Disney and all that, big hotels and lots of, uh, you know, lots of ways to make money over there. But it's not really very Hawaii. Yeah, and automation is something, who wants to be served by a robot? <laughs> I mean, you're correct. And, and uh, I think that authenticity of experience is something that we have lost sight of. And, and we have to return to our roots and say, what, how can we uh, present a better visitor experience that is very authentic? Uh, and, and, or else it's comparable, uh, identical to going to Las Vegas or some other resort. You know. <clears throat> There's a question about think tech here. Wouldn't it be interesting to have think tech on the televisions sure. in the rooms of at least some of these hotels? The objection to that is we, we, don't, we don't want local television. We don't want to know from you know, programs like think tech and others uh, what happens on the ground outside Waikiki. We want our, our clientele to spend money. We want them to right. walk down, you know, Kalakaua Avenue and buy things. We want them in the restaurants and so right. forth. Um, so we don't, we don't want to expose them to these local influences. Now, this probably makes more money. I mean, as, as a general concept, it does make more money. But is this the brand we're really selling? You know, it's like when the big money came in back in the day, and the Sheraton to start and all these other ones, um, you know, they, they were interested in things other than what the brand had been up till that point. And it's regrettable that they've turned their back in some ways on the, the perpetuation of that brand. But it's been, time to get back to that. Yeah, there have been many hotel service, though, of families uh, at the end of the trip. And what they remember most is um, a Hawaiian language uh, class or, or authentic uh, kinds of uh, food experiences or playing a game uh, that uh, uh, reflected Hawaiian history. There's many things that they remember uh, much more than going into the ocean or Hawaiian music and, and culture. So I think those are things that we have that you're right, that uh, will not, cannot, cannot be copied or replicated in other places. Yeah. Can you think of a single, a single Okazu Ya in all of Waikiki? I can't. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and right. yet, to me, that's very important or, as part or, of a local experience. Or a uh, center for Hawaiian music and hula in Waikiki. And, and, and uh, people can see people practicing or you know, take part of it. There's, yeah. Yeah, that used, Kodai Kula show, remember, that was on the grounds it of Kapilani? It could exist today if somebody <laughs> right. funded it. And, and, and uh, that ended, but it was a huge occasion for people with cameras, and that's what they brought back to Iowa or New York. Yeah, don't, don't go too, too fast away from the music. The music is so important. Right. 
Uh, the music is the statement of the heart of the, of the culture, as far as I'm concerned. And we used to have so much more music, you know, authentic local music in Waikiki. In those days, the hotels would promote the music. In other words, they would give you the room and say, come here and we'll split the gate. Okay, now they say, no, you need a promoter. The promoter has to hire the room and pay for the room, and the promoter will handle the gate. Um, this is a big problem because the, uh, there aren't that many promoters uh, who no. can afford that sort of thing, and the musicians certainly cannot afford it. So what we've seen is a huge decline in local music in Waikiki because of that change. And I think we need to get back to it because it has actually undermined the development of local music. That's right. And, you know, Don Ho started out in a, a place in Kailua <laughs> first, and then he came yeah, to the yeah. bigger uh, destination or bigger, uh, uh, I guess, uh, venues in Waikiki. And, and uh, there was the golden age of the 70s, 80s, and the Kimo Back Bay the, and the uh, Society of Seven, and, and many, many, many more acts that sure. used to populate Waikiki. You're correct. Yeah, yeah. And, and now, you know, a musician, if he's any good, he can't make any money here because Waikiki is really not profitable for him. So he has to go somewhere else in order to play his music and make a living. So, so this is going, not what we want. So going back to teaching hotel, maybe there should be a musical venue. Absolutely. <laughs> or a lab for hula and, and uh, for Hawaiian music in, in the hotel itself. You know, it's like, it's like oh. a barber shop. If I go to a, a barber school, right. it's going to be like a fraction of the price. <laughs> but I'll get a pretty good oh, yeah, haircut. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the, the teacher will be watching. That's right. It doesn't, you know, do, do <laughs> mangle my, my, my hair. Right. Um, it's the same thing with the hotel. If I had a hotel that was a teaching hotel right. on Kalakaua Avenue, Avenue, and I lit it up right, and oh, I yeah, made the yeah, rooms oh, good, and the staff was very good, yeah. food was very oh, yeah. good. Gee, that would be really popular oh, around yeah, the yeah. world. You could do all kinds of innovations that you wouldn't do in a larger hotel. So you're absolutely right. And I think that's—we're going to end it here. But I think there's so many ideas to really re revitalize uh, tourism in, in Hawaii. Who's going to do it? Well— I hope there's people watching who would be entrepreneurial <laughs> enough to really invest and, 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 and really uh, take it away and, and, and do something. Yeah. It's the best startup of all, really, when you consider the fact that this is the engine of our economy. That's right. <laughs> and this is Ray Tsuchiyama. Thank you for watching for, for Business in Hawaii. Thank you.